Now, let's go ahead and find out where that particular point is. If we know that we need to go ahead and find out the particular values of the function for x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to 1, well, we can just put it into the function. So if I put f of negative, if I put negative 1 into f, I come up with 6. Therefore, this value right over here of negative 1, 6, if I plot that, negative 1, 6, is right here, the function is actually going to be stationary. In other words, the tangent, the instantaneous rate of change, or the slope of the tangency line, is actually going to be zero at that particular point. So what I'm going to do then is I'm actually just going to go ahead and draw this line through it to show that the slope at that point is zero. Okay? Now let's go ahead and also take a look at what happens when I go ahead and substitute 1 in for the function f. I come up with the value of 2. Therefore, I also know that the function is going to be stationary at this point, 1, 2. In other words, the function is going to have a horizontal tangency at that point. Okay, so now, how does this help us? Well, we know that this f for here, the first derivative is 0. I know that for this point right over here, the first derivative is actually 0 as well. Everywhere else, everywhere else, it is either going to be positive or negative. Okay? And being that these are the only two places where it's actually equal to 0, this has to be either all positive or all negative. This has to be either all positive or all negative. This has to be all positive or all negative. And so I can just choose a particular value. And let's just choose, for example, negative 2. If I was to go ahead and substitute negative 2 into f prime of x, if I substitute the negative 2 into f prime of x, what would I come up with? Okay. f prime of negative 2. Okay, that's going to be, let me use a different one. f prime of negative 2. I'm going to use this one here because really, I'm not even have, I don't even have to look at the values. I only have to look at the signs. And so if I have everything multiplied together, well, I can very easily multiply things and determine what the value is if it's in factor form. So I have 3, which is a positive number, times it by, well, negative 2 plus 1 is actually going to be a negative number. Okay? Negative number, and I'm going to multiply it by, well, negative 2 times uh, minus 1, that's going to be another negative number. So that's a negative number. So if I go a positive times a negative times a times a negative, that, of course, is going to be a positive number. Okay, so let's see what happens now. If I was to go ahead and choose, like, say, for example, f prime of 0. Now, which one would be better to use? Well, I think this one would be better to use, because if I just substitute 0 into x, this whole part disappears, and I'm coming out with a negative. So that's going to give me a negative. And if I go ahead and take a look at f prime, and let's just take another value here, let's just say 2. Then f prime of 2 is going to give, well, the 3, of course, is a positive value, times it by. If I put 2 into here, that's going to give me a positive value. If I put 2 into here, that's also going to give me a positive value. So this is all positive. Okay, so what does that mean now? What that means then is that from this point this way, the function is actually increasing. So in other words, what that means then is that all of the values have to be coming like this. And then after that, it is actually going to be negative from here on. So that means that the graph has to go something like this. And then it has to be positive from their point, that point on. And so then it has to come like that. So you get a really clear idea as to what exactly is happening with the graph. Now, to make things a little bit, just a little bit more accurate, we can then go ahead and pick, let's say, for example, a value of at negative 2. What is it at negative 2? So if I just do a value of negative 2, I can calculate what that point is. If I do a value of, let's say, for example, of 3, I can calculate another value. And I know then that the function has to look something 
like this. It has to. That's the only thing that it can do based upon the values of f prime of x. So notice that here the function is increasing because the slopes are all positive. You get a stationary point, right? Okay, let's do this again. You have all the slopes which are positive. You have a stationary point at x is equal to negative x is equal to negative one. After that, all the slopes are all negative. Then when you get to x is equal to one, the slope is zero again, and then from there on it is positive. Okay, so what we know then is just by looking at the first derivative, we can actually find a very simple way of coming up with a reasonable graph based upon the results and the relationship between the first derivative and the original function. Now the nice thing of course is now we can actually go ahead and answer some other questions as well. Can I find the range? Well, we know that this is going to continue to increase right from this side. So in other words, the, this graph is going to continue going down. So that means that the range is going to be negative infinity to, and then it's going to, if we continue this way, the function has to continue to increase because the first derivative is positive. That means it's going to go to positive infinity. The range is also all real numbers. Now, with regards to the x-intercept, if I just take a look at what's happening here, there's only one, right? This graph continues up that way. This graph comes down here. It's going to be someplace over here. So I know that there's one x-intercept, but where it is, I still don't know. Okay, and there you go. That's how you can go ahead and use the first derivative to help you graph a function without having to plot a ton of points. So please make sure to go ahead and take a look at when you have a function. Use your non-calculus items. Find the first derivative. Determine where the first derivative is equal to zero. Determine the signs for all the other values. Plot those points and you should be able to come up with a reasonable approximation for the graph. The last thing that I would like to ask you, and we'll again consider this in class as well, is what does the term monotonic mean? You need to know what this term monotonic means, and what does the graph look like, okay? The graph, what does it look like? Okay, so give it a shot. We'll see how you do with curve properties part one, and we'll see you in class the next time. Good luck, and see ya.